Tobias Copper is the big brains behind Webpack and also now TurboPack over at Vercel. I met up with him at the JS Nation, and we had a good sit-down conversation about TurboPack, where it's going, how it fits into Vercel and Next.js. Let's get right into it. Tobias Copper, so nice to meet you finally. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I work so much on Model, model Federation yeah. as part of I know, I know. Uh, I watched your videos about Yeah, that. there you go. <laughs> Yeah, and so now you're doing Turbo Pack. Yeah. Cool. So when you th like, how did that transition happen? Ah, uh, it was like about one and a half years ago, and like I was for at Versal like two, about like two and a half, uh, at this point I was at Versal at one, like one year, and we spent most of the time like all of the time optimizing Webpack for Next.js, like right. making faster. But like eventually we hit some boundaries where like some wall. optimization, like right. it was too hard to like to get it to optimize and it. Especially, it was too hard to get it optimized in a way that we don't break like existing Webpack users. We can't really change the whole architecture at once and like right. expect it to like just work with existing <laughs> plugins. Especially as plugins like can change everything. It's like to, uh, like yeah, you have really Especially low since Webpack to... Five had just done and done some pretty major re refactoring. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. and uh, every major version is like people getting annoyed about breaking changes, and it's, <laughs> right. it, they were really small breaking changes. Like it's not that we changed the whole architecture. So eventually we ended up like um, designing a new architecture to like make incremental builds first, like this kind of uh, HMI experience, like GitHub experience, like the first class uh, architecturally in the core embedded uh, like experience so we make it faster. Nice. Um, yeah, so and we ended so up. That wasn't efficient enough and so decided to port. Yeah, it's not, we didn't port, it's like, um, we, we badly made a new architecture and built a new bundle on top of it. Right, right. We, we, we badly didn't use any Webpack code. We, we aligned with like how Webpack works and like right. basic stuff, but it, it's a new architecture makes it like very different from, from Webpack. And like, all we made new decisions, like we also tried to make it lazy first. So we like, if you request something, you, only if you request something, it's actually computed. So we- Oh, okay. Yeah, in, in Webpack, you basically do a build and then it like spits out assets and then you can request them anyway. Right, a massive tree, as I recall, and you can yeah. kind of traverse the tree yeah. and yeah, okay. And in the pack, it's more like uh, we build. We don't build the tree until you actually request the file. So we build it. We build only like the modules until the point where the first chunk of the initial page load is servable. And then, like, if you dynamically import something, we don't really compile it until you actually request it from the browser. Right. Nice. So it's kind of like kind of lazy first experience. So from a just a purely developer experience, if I'm using Next.js 12, I'm on Turbo Pack. And um, not by default, you have to pass dash dash turbo. Okay, it's, it's and then on 13, it's default? Uh, we will make it if default eventually, but okay. I'm not sure when exactly. And it's probably only like default for if you don't have Webpack config or special Next.js config or something like that stuff. So we, we want to move to this default turbo pack, and we probably can get there for like if you don't have special config pretty easily. Like yeah. once we support everything, we can just flip, flip the switch and then default turbo pack. Um, yeah, it's like we still have to make some like uh, bug fixes and like improvements and edge cases. Like, uh, so I haven't customized the turbo uh, the webpack at all. That good. Then You're good. You, You're good. Straight up. It's like you should dash dash turbo. And yeah. then how much? What, what kind of a speed up do I get off that? Um, so initial build is like a little bit faster, but we're still working on that. But HMR is incredibly fast. Is it like ridiculous? It's, Bam. It's, it's, really, yeah, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> it's, like, it's like two digit milliseconds independent of upsize. It's like uh, it's really fast. Okay, That's cool. Too. And then on the CI/CD side, so when I do the build, I guess uh, we, we don't after. have build yet. That's one point why we can't enable it by default. So build okay. is, is work in progress. I think it's merged by yesterday or something. Oh, nice! But well, only nice. a proof of concept. Oh, okay, right. uh, so it's like, um, yeah, we, we're trying to make build work, yeah. and then uh, the optimizations will follow us. Like, uh, like we, we just have the build as like meeting the uh, development uh, bundles basically, uh, which is like not really usable for production, but like we we. Like continuous improve on that uh, and like at the optimizations, minification, and that stuff. And yeah, but awesome. it will be there eventually. <laughs> okay, so now the big question module federation. So is it ever going to do module federation? It's not, it's, it's, it's technically we can do it like mm. because we, um, on runtime, it looks really similar to Webpack. So the whole module system is really similar to Webpack's module system at runtime. So it should but, be n not super okay. complicated. So it's basically, um, 
Webpack has this kind of Webpack require function. We have yeah. Webpack require. It's like basically the same. Little, few little changes, but this idea, the core idea is the same. We have a module system at runtime in some kind of cache or map. Uh, and um, so we can do the same as Webpack's doing for module federation. Um, we, it's not on the roadmap yet, like we don't plan that much in, in for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but it's technically possible to implement that. Um, we probably won't add it for Next.js because Next.js don't support module federation yet and it's more complicated due to server side rendering and all that right. kind of stuff. Right, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, um, but we eventually also, so it's basically the next step after Next uh, for TurboPack, TurboPack for Next is that we have a TurboPack standalone CLI similar to Webpack. Okay. And that then it makes sense to add something like Moto Federation. Awesome, awesome. Because Moodle I know yeah, Vite just added a, well, not officially, but there's a great Vite plugin now for Module Federation. So yeah. I mean, the, the service area is expanding. Yeah. Uh, well, module federation. The cool thing in Model Federation is that you, you can actually use then Webpack, Model Federation, and Toolpack Federation, and Vite, everything together because, like I said, that's the idea of Model Federation that you have independent builds and it right? doesn't matter. Right, exactly. Which yes. Is yeah, 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 totally. So, it, yeah, it could be <clears throat> benefits of that, yeah. So, if I worked really hard, could I actually get Turbo Pack Federation to work today? Oh, it's, if you can write a lot of Rust code. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, all right. So, probably not no, yet. Okay. It's all right. not, not practical at the moment. But at but, some point. Yeah, so you can technically get Moto uh, um, Toolpack working as standalone kind of thing, but it's like, although some people did it for some applications, but it's like not officially released yet. And the major thing we want to figure out is like how we um, figure out the configuration and the API of Toolpack because we don't want to make like a similar thing or what people think it's a mistake with Webpack configuration that's like too huge, too complicated, and that's Oh, actually. yeah. We want to make it easier and more approachable for people. So it's like, uh, yeah, we have to figure out how we take care of that. And So yeah. what are you thinking? Uh, what, what's on the table? Yeah, probably more, the, more out of the box. So like similar okay. what Next.js do. But basically, we want to push all the Next.js features out of the box, like Last support, CSS module support. Most things out of the box, but still configurable, like. Uh, we, we, we want to... So lots of good defaults. Good and defaults, and, but still having the flexibility of yeah. Webpack. So I think in Webpack, uh, many people value uh, the flexibility of it and make it easy to write plugins and extend it to and or shape it to yeah, their needs. And, and we don't want to lose that. We want to, maybe not the similar, but like at least uh, nearly the same level of yeah. flexibility. It's probably not that low level as Webpack. And I don't think we need that. that it was needed when Webpack was created where like every, like everything in, in the web ecosystem was in flux. We wasn't sure if you like, uh, like what's the right, whatever language for whatever thing, templating, yeah. TypeScript, or that kind of stuff. So it's like more like, I think it's more like condensed on a smaller subset of the ecosystem what people actually use. And um, I, yeah, that it makes it easier to Write a bundler on the top of it. I've seen some interesting stuff in the TypeScript space. Oh, there's a, um, a, a TypeScript CI CD project recently. It was kind of cool. It basically you define your whole CI CD pipeline literally by writing it out in TypeScript. I thought that was actually pretty yeah, sweet. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe, you know, yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah, we have to figure out all the stuff. And we probably yeah. also need some feedback from the community about yeah. what, what's actually needed. And um, yeah, so. So, if people want to help out, contribute, how would they, how would they do that? Yeah, it's, 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 it's harder than contributing to Webpack because Webpack was written in JavaScript. Right. And you now it's in Rust. Well, you got to so do it in Rust, but you know, if they, if they want to do that. Yeah, you have to learn Rust. Uh, yeah, that's okay. It's not quite yeah. super complicated. And no. Especially, it, it, it also can, if you can write Rust, it's make it easier to contribute because also strict types for checking makes it really easy to verify that you're right? actually writing yeah. code that works. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> like, write it, like, if Rust compiles, it's like the first step to having it right. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so, but they can contribute if they know Rust and... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fully open source. We, you can contribute, we make pull requests. We also merged a few pull requests of external contributors. Fantastic. But it's like not that many that contribute yet. So it's like uh, coming, yeah, probably when more people adopt it. Yeah. So what happens to Webpack and all this? Um, yeah, so it's on lacking return to Webpack. <laughs> Funny story. And yeah, it's, it's still, we have like still um, Alex and uh, Sean maintaining it and... Yeah, I joined the, the monthly week, uh, monthly meetings for Webpack, okay. and yeah, I'm. Is Webpack six in the works? It's yeah, not sure if we need a Webpack six. Like, <laughs> no, in, okay. no, no, not in the sense we need don't need improvements, but we we trying to make more like in the idea of like pushing more into without breaking into like major in the Webpack, Webpack five and make it more experimental flex 
to enable that and um, maybe then WebEx 6 is only like switching a bunch of experimental flags to default and that's more like the major change. Then. Yeah. So trying to avoid the breaking changes because yeah, people get annoyed by that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much, sir. This has been great. Yeah, thank you too. All right. Thanks again to Tobias for spending some time with us and talking all about TurboPack in Amsterdam at JS Nation. And thanks to JS Nation for putting me up there. And if you want to go to one of these conferences, there are two more coming up this year. There is React Advanced in London, they may want to check out, and also React Summit in New York, which is fantastic. These are awesome conferences you really should try to attend. In the meantime, of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comments section right down below. If you like the video, hit that like button, please. It really helps with the algorithm. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button. Click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.